So we have a video tonight. Do you want to share your thoughts, comments, and criticisms? Whoa, baby. On steroids in the AFL, does the AFL have a steroid problem? Well, in my opinion, the AFL doesn't have a steroid problem because nobody in the AFL takes steroids because only one uh, person was busted with steroids since 1997, according to the recent look on Google searches. So only one in the history of AFL Aussie Rules football, only one footy player was busted for steroids. That was Justin Charles in 1997 for a horse steroid, Bolden on, which is a horse steroid. And so here's a picture of Justin Charles. He, he was pretty open with it. He said, yep, I've been taking horse steroids. This is what you look like if you take horse steroids. Horse, this is how you, you can't get this physique without horse steroids. Here's another picture here. Which body is best for health and performance? We've got a sprinter versus a marathoner. All right, now, people always go, well, sprinting's best for, you know, I want to, I want to be swole. And it's like, we've got to get on steroids because this picture here is Dwayne Chambers, and he was well known for being on steroids. And here's a before picture of Dwayne Chambers. So unless you're on, you can sprint your fucking tits off, but unless you're on steroids, anabolic sex steroids like testosterone, etc., you're never going to have a physique of Dwayne Chambers. Even Dwayne will admit that. I see the picture of the marathon in the middle. Marathoners are well known for taking steroids as well, but low dosages, low dose of testosterone, maybe 100 milligrams a week, 200 milligrams a week maximum, but for very short cycles because you put on too much water weight, you put on too much muscle. So the, the marathoners take steroids for the red blood cell effect. The sprinters is more the power, all right? The fast, the speed. But the marathoners is more for endurance, so they take a lot less. So this picture should be which steroid cycle is best for Cross out health, because we know too much steroids is not good. Cross out health and put performance. Which steroid cycle is best for performance? Let's get back to Aussie Rules football, the cleanest sport in the world. AFL footy, the cleanest sport in the world. It's only had one, correct me if I'm wrong, one positive test for anabolic steroids since 1997. Now, AFL's got a pretty strict drug code. Their drug code is so strict, if a player tests positive, correct me if I'm wrong, it doesn't even go public. Because <laughs> they have a strict privacy rule. So let's say I'm an AFL player and I, I go to the doctor and get some testosterone and anthate, which is fucking easy to get. You give me one hour in any country in the world and I'll come back with steroids from a doctor. 100%. 99.9%. .9 might, might take me two hours. But you can take me any country in the world, in a sort of Western sort of system, or even Asia or Africa, I'm going to have steroids for you. From a legally, from a doctor. So let's say I get on the gear and I'm kicking the footy around, and there's a test. Australian Sports Doping Agency comes and tests me. They cannot publish the results. It has to go for the AFL first, and then the AFL goes, well, do we want to publish this publicly? Maybe not. So recently there was a guy called Ryan Crowley, positive for an unidentified substance, still allowed to play for a bit. In cycling, if you take a fucking B12 injection and your hemoglobin goes up too high, you get a biological passport strike, you're out for two years. You have to spend fucking hundred thousand dollars to prove innocence or whatever. So I know cyclists don't even want to take B12 shots because they're worried about their biological passport just tweaking the radar a bit, just because your hemoglobin might go up. But if you're an AFL player, correct me if I'm wrong, of my understanding, based on what I read on the internet, and my honest opinion in the interest of the public interest, based on what I read on the internet, if you test positive as an AFL player, it doesn't go public. It just gets dealt with in the club. So we've had one player. So AFL is officially the cleanest sport on the planet. Now here's a picture of Ben Cousins. Ben Cousins was pretty pretty uh, public about his drug issues. Now Ben Cousins would never do anabolic steroids though. Even though he's bigger than Dwayne Chambers, Ben Cousins Ben Cousins would never do anabolics. All right, because you don't because he just wouldn't. Because I mean you wouldn't. You'd do meth and all that shit and drink, drive, and risk your life. But you'd never do anabolics. Because that would be cheating. You do everything else, though. <laughs> so, my, my, my tip for Ben Cousins, and I'm not trying to be a smart ass, but my tip would be these guys could become coaches to Olympic athletes. Because if you can put that much muscle on without taking horse steroids like Justin Charles did, if Ben Cousins is full natty bra, he should become what the, the, all these footy players who are as swole as Ben Cousins, they should, I reckon they should quit footy and make more money being a coach to like Olympic superstars who are getting busted for, like, Ben Johnson, etc., or like the U.S. sprinters. So why are people injecting themselves with horse steroids, etc., when they don't need to, when they can get as swole as Ben Cousins popping a few pingers? 
You know, so that's my, that's my tip there. So why, you know, why are these people doing steroids when you don't need to? And Ben Cousins is living proof because uh, we know steroids uh, steroids work. But uh, so Ben Cousins, full natural athlete, AFL is the cleanest of the clean. AFL would be the cleanest sport on the planet. These guys, are the footy players, man, I mean, they're like, you know, they don't even drink. They don't smoke ganja. They don't abuse women. They don't fuck each other's wives, whatever. It's all fucking legit, man. The AFL is like squeaky clean. It's squeaky clean. One positive anabolic steroid test, correct from wrong, since 1997. Now, Justin Charles, just to wrap it up quickly, Justin Charles, isn't, I'll, put, I'll link it down below. Justin Charles, he must have had popped too many eckies or something. Justin Charles claims the AFL had a cover-up drug scandal. Justin Charles, the guy who tested positive in 1997, he says he went to the AFL with the big dogs in the AFL, and he says, I gave the AFL information about how I got the steroids, but the AFL chose not to act. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't believe I don't believe Justin Charles because he's a drug cheat. I believe the AFL because they're upstanding citizens. But you can't trust those steroid guys like Justin Charles. Um, and, and Justin Charles claims that... Uh, Justin Charles says he went to the AFL and says, I'll tell you where I got my steroids from. And the AFL said, okay, we'll pretend we didn't hear that. And uh, so Justin Charles says, it was so controversial it would have co opened up a can of worms. No one wanted to go down that path. And uh, the media went to Justin Charles recently, uh, went to the AFL recently, and the AFL operations manager, Adrian Anderson, said, this is the first I've ever heard of that claim. With the steroids. Wouldn't have a clue, mate. It's squeaky clean. I agree. You know, AFL is legit. We have not had a positive test for performance enhancing drugs since Justin Charles, 1997. <laughs> 18 years. No one's on the steroids at AFL. Squeaky clean. Just the guys too recently had some bad steak in New Zealand, guys. You know, just had some bad, she had some tofu or something. But if we had any information about supplying performance enhancing drugs, this is exactly the information we would share with the Australian Sports Doping Agency, the Police and Customs. So that's the AFL Chief uh, Operations Manager, Adrian Anderson, high standing individual. Uh, if Justin has any relevant information, he has a responsibility to pass it on. The AFL is proud of its record in the fight against performance enhancing drugs and the cooperation and collaboration with the ASDA and other authorities, and there's no way that any such information would not be held on authorities. Like I said, man, AFL is the squeakiest fucking clean sport on the planet. Even the acid and controversial supplement scandal uh, with the thymus and 500 or whatever, allegedly, whatever, that was cleared. I'll tell you what, man. Don't even need to do drug testing in AFL because none of these guys use nothing. It's the cleanest sport on the planet. AFL, squeaky fucking clean. Let's stick with cycling.